Thank you. So I think in terms of being ready as a, as a company to, to face the, the digital natives world, I think we need to not just look at people coming into our company, but I think as a company it's extremely important to look at your customers as well. But I'm not in a B2B type of environment. I'm actually in a business to consumer environment. So we need to look at our consumers. And I think you all know that Coca-Cola typically is targeting uh, 12 to 9 year old people and guess what they are typically living in this world so the the real challenge we are having as a company is really finding the people attracting these type of people in our company that understand where our consumers are living day to day and are we ready today i'm not sure we are so that is definitely a challenge from our side what we've seen in our company is that typically in the marketing department, there's been a lot of investment in terms of digital marketing to make sure that we could connect to our consumers. And I think like 10 years ago, IT was definitely lagging behind. And I see you, I see you nodding, Alexander, but that's a true problem. So we saw that everything that was digital natives was actually growing more within the business, as we typically call it, from within IT, which is maybe not correct. Uh, but the challenge truly is to make sure that as an IT organization that we build the same capability so that the business and the marketing and, and even the communications department can come to us so that we can explain them where they can find business value uh, from a social media perspective. Mm -hmm. Alexander De Wolf, you were nodding. That meant you uh, need the microphone. Yes. I was totally not prepared to take the word, but no problem. No, I think uh, it's uh, really true that customers are uh, the most important for a company. We are a B2B company. Uh, I'm in the wholesale uh, activity uh, in Sonipar, which is a worldwide group in distribution. And the problem we have is that our segments is going from installers who are already m almost uh, 63 years old to young uh, digital natives, which are 20 years old. And we see really uh, a different customer behavior uh, if we look through that and uh, we do about already today 25 percent of our business in uh, on uh, internet so we have an e-shop and the technology as we see it is mostly used to make business to have proximity to these customers because we have as we are a b2b model we have still more than 12,000 customers so it's kind of one to many approach and on the other hand is to link to the eShop, which is the core of our activity, uh, also the information coming from all of our suppliers. You have to understand we have about a hundred, uh, more than uh, 500 suppliers and uh, we must also link this. So for us, the technology and the internet is a main uh, growing engine uh, as for our customers, as for our suppliers. And the aim for the IT department is really uh, to make this available all the time because if the e-shop goes down, all of the processes are down, uh, the whole, uh, I must say, the uh, logistics center, which uh, we have about 150 people there, are technical unemployed. So it means that we are very vulnerable to IT and that's the way how we look uh, to that. Brive Umris Lublevnik, we've seen a beautiful video at the beginning of the uh, event. Um, tell us first, in this part of the discussion, do you agree with the keynote speakers on the kind of environment in which we're now operating? Then the second debate will be what do we need to do to get ahead? Yes. Yeah, yeah of course, I, I do agree. Um, I, I'll switch to French. Uh, oui, avec plaisir. French. Donc, euh, nous parlerons tous euh, les trois langues euh, tout au long voilà. du débat, en français, en néerlandais. Allez-y. Oui. Donc, je, je suis en, évidemment entièrement d'accord. J'ai beaucoup apprécié la présentation de, de, de Peter, en particulier, parce qu'elle m'a rappelé beaucoup de choses que j'ai vécues moi-même. Euh, et donc, chez Imakina, on est un cas un petit peu particulier. On s'appelle nous-mêmes une digital native agency. La plupart des gens chez nous, que je crois 80% des, des gens chez nous ont moins de 30 ans. Euh, on ne rentre pas chez Imakina sans être passionné par la technologie, jeux vidéo, ne pas avoir un, un smartphone est une faute de goût lamentable. Euh, je pense que la moitié des gens chez nous ont, ont déjà un iPhone, on a une vingtaine à avoir des iPads. Voilà, c'est un, une entreprise dont c'est la, la, la nature et l'essence même. Et donc c'est intéressant à titre de laboratoire parce que <coughs> nos clients, qui sont des, des entreprises, Belgacom, Electrabel, enfin, des entreprises... Euh, 
qui, qui sont là depuis longtemps et qui, qui, qui ont à soir toutes les nouvelles possibilités qu'offrent les outils que maîtrisent les, les DJ natives pour créer plus de valeur. Parce qu'on se rend compte que ce sont des, 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 des personnes qui travaillent constamment. En fait, ils ne font plus la, la, de distinction entre le moment où ils travaillent et le moment où ils, ils jouent. C'était un petit peu une des, une des critiques que j'adressais à, à une slide de Peter. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y a pas vraiment un moment où ils travaillent, où ils vivent, ils jouent. Ils font tout en permanence. C'est-à-dire qu'ils rentrent chez eux, euh, ils quittent le bureau. Une demi-heure après être à, 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 à avoir fait le trajet, ils arrivent chez eux et crac, ils rallument leur PC et ils continuent à répondre. Mais ils sont toujours sur Twitter. Ils sont toujours sur... Nous, on utilise Yammer en interne, qui est une sorte de de Twitter d'entreprise, donc on est tous là en train de discuter, et puis on, on, on est derrière no, notre télévision, on va allumer notre PS3 et on se met sur Yammer, qui est le réseau de l'entreprise, qui veut jouer un petit euh, GTA ou un jeu sur la PS3, et hop, on se retrouve encore dans un autre monde virtuel. Donc c'est assez intéressant parce que, certes, on joue tout le temps, euh, on ne voit d'ailleurs plus vraiment le travail comme une activité ennuyeuse qu'on qu mène pour gagner notre vie, mais plutôt comme quelque chose de passionnant qu'on vit au quotidien et où on partage des choses entre, entre collègues pour créer des choses ensemble pour, pour nos clients entreprises. Et on, on est en permanence en train de créer de la valeur. Donc si on a une idée à 9h du soir à la maison, eh ben, on va la partager avec nos collègues et, et jusqu'à 1h, 2h du matin, on, on s'échange des infos et on, on collabore ensemble. Donc là, je crois que c'est assez intéressant quand on voit que euh, chez certains de nos clients, les syndicats manifestent parce que 7h48 de travail par jour, c'est un petit peu exagéré, il faut respecter la pause de travail. On, on a l'impression que c'est un, un monde auquel on n'appartient plus du tout, quoi. Vraiment, on est totalement déconnecté de ce monde-là. Qui, qui... Voilà. D'accord. Et lorsque vous disiez, c'est peut-être une chose que je voudrais dire à partir d'une de, de, des images qu'on a vues, vous disiez, c'est Peter qui l'a dit, euh, il y avait deux Peter, mais c'était euh, l'image de Peter Inzen au moment où il présentait les différentes activités voilà, des différents groupes d'âge. Euh... En fait, il s'agit d'un spectre, et ce que nous venons d'entendre de la part de M. Euh, Levnek, euh, c'est évidemment l'avant-garde, n'est-ce pas I, I think it is the avant-garde, but I think um, it's probably going to be difficult to take that experience and just transpose it to every single employee, mm -hmm. at every single age group. But I think it is probably the, the flu between what is work and what is not work is disappearing. Mm -hmm. The flu also between what is my employer and what is not my employer is disappearing. Mm -hmm. And I think probably the, the future of employer-employee relationship is going to be much more about fluidity mm -hmm. than it's about being static. And I think it's something we have to think about. Mm -hmm. Confirming what you just said, donc une confirmation d'une certaine façon de ce que vous venez de dire. Alors, Paul uh, Van Bierwitt, uh, Cisco, là, sur l'analyse, uh, over the diagnose. Uh, bent u het eens met wat we van de keynote speakers hebben gehoord? Well, to start it, I would like to make a slight correction. I'm not the CEO of Cisco. Uh, the the <laughs> okay, size of Belgium. my car is smaller than <laughs> yes. the size of the plane of John Chambers. So yes. I'm in charge of Cisco's so operation yes. in Belgium and Luxembourg. Yes. Um, obviously, we, we live thanks and through and for the internet. So the more you tweet it, the more you do whatever, which has been discussed. We like it, uh, obviously. Um, but there's another dimension internally within Cisco, uh, how we use all these tools in order in, not to please the natives. We are, by definition, digital within Cisco. But we came to the conclusion that if, if the company wants to grow faster than competition as a global company, the only thing we, the, the way we have to do it is to make sure we become a collaborative organization, much more than a command and control organization. So we are in the phases, and it started five to six years ago, of changing the whole organization from a rather hierarchical organization towards a collaborative environment, which is even for a digital company not obvious to do. So the tools help us to do so, but it's the biggest uh, credo of our CEO, John Chambers, is to change the company. And we do this by obviously using that technology. So in our case, it's a combination of company culture, uh, process, and obviously technology, which I would say is the easy part for a company such as Cisco. The tough part is the process and the culture. Ok, Luc de Lombard, the last but not least. Uh, op basis van uw ervaring binnen uh, van de Moortelen, we hebben gehoord uh, van Peter Hinzen, we're halfway, we zagen daar die uh, grafiek, maar het is natuurlijk geen rechtlijnige grafiek. Meneer Van Hoek. Ja, 
Um, this is working? Yeah. Yep. Um, this is what I rem made a remark that is Peter, uh, Peter said uh, rightly we are about halfway, but he didn't, exp he didn't say that uh, 